It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It is up with People Jewel's turn. She is our current leader in terms of money, but um, Tater is doing better in terms of board position because she is here. She's about ready to go into Superior Court. Uh, the other two are in varying degrees of success. I'd say Pinky's doing better than Watermelon, but right now it's Jewel's turn, our green player. She is looking to get a two on this die roll. Three, four, five, two or six, so she's got a... 33% chance of catching up board wise and she does it so on her next turn she can go into the superior court all right let's see what her case is hocus pocus out of focus people will try anything to kick the smoking habit the plaintiff a head nurse was trying to try hypnosis and sought the help of a good friend and co-worker while under his care, she suffered a complete mental breakdown and was hospital hospitalized for two weeks. She is suing her co-worker for malpractice as he should have been aware of her condition and advised her to seek psychiatric care. The defendant testified that he was only treating her for nicotine addiction and, and was unaware of her psychotic state. That is a weird one. <laughs> okay. Um, I've actually been hypnotized before. I, I'm not sure if I was actually hypnotized or not, but I was definitely in a different state during that state, that time, but maybe more aware than, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like being on the edge of sleep. You're, you're, you're awake, but you're asleep. That's what it was like for me anyway. All right, so what do our jury, what does our jury think about that? I think... I think they're going to find for the defense in this case. Yeah, I think they are. Uh, now let's look at the money involved. Jules could appeal for 10000 That's not bad. She'll go ahead and do that. She's got hundreds of thousands of dollars. What's 10000 The chance to go again, I think uh, that's what's big about these appeals. You get another turn, and that's bonus. Um, case number 17. Verdict for the defense. She just blew $10,000. $10,000 for a chance. A chance to start Superior Court right now. Right here, right now. All right, Tater just got a pretty huge chance card. Uh, this is in Superior Court. Superior Court is for real, man. Look at these settlements. 20,000 times the die roll. 40,000 times the die roll. 10,000 times the die roll. And then this, vengeful husband ruined by divorce settlement, settlement takes it out on his wife's attorney. Pick any player as the target and roll the die. On a one to two bullseye, it says he, but it's a she, has been reincarnated on the recess square in another law firm with only 50,000. Die roll three to six, missed, phew. So she's taking a shot, there's actual murder in this game. She's taking a shot at up with people Jules, our, who's got, 800,000 plus right now. And if she gets a one or two, Jules essentially has to start the game over. She did not. Phew! Jules is on a settlement space. I, I checked in the rules. She could actually do the settlement on people who are out here who presumably have a lot less money. But she's going to go ahead and do it on Tater. A little tit for tat. Um, 20,000 times the die roll if it's an even number. It's an odd. Phew! Time to focus on Pinky. Pinky has enough money to get into Superior Court if she lands on the right space. Um, won a settlement last time. She's blue. One, two, three, four. Not the right space, but we can go through her court case. Isn't it romantic? Having made the rounds of his social clubs, the plaintiff decided to visit his girlfriend. It was late, and he did not want to wake the owner, the other tenant, so he climbed onto the roof to throw pebbles at her window. Not being too steady on his feet, he slipped and fell two stories through a skylight. The fall broke both knees, injured his back, and of course woke up everybody. He is suing one of the clubs for having allowed him to become drunk. The defendants claim that he was served only a few beers in their establishment. We had another case like this where someone, I think, fell on some stairs or something. No, they... There was another case where someone tried to sue the bar for being drunk. Um, and I think it was for the defense. I think the people are going to find for the defense. And I don't think Pinky's going to appeal that. It doesn't seem like she could win. I'm tempted to check, but I think that ruins the replayability of the game to check when, when you don't actually need to check. 
Another big roll for watermelon. She's three spaces away from recess. If she lands on it, she gets a million. If she passes it, she has to pay another 100,000. She's running short on funds, but rolling this right will make her the game's leader in terms of money. Four, just missed it by one. It's a bummer for her. I don't know if she can afford another time around. She'll have to see what her funds are like when she gets there and decide whether or not to discard this card possibly. All right, I've since had a superior court case. The, the payout they're looking for was three million. This is totally a different degree. The appeals cost was 500,000. So appealing is gonna be a lot different. Um, it was Tater's card. She opted not to appeal because she couldn't afford it. And so she got, she got 200,000, I think. Yeah. All right, but now up with people is gunning for her again with the strongest settlement space in the game. She could take 240,000 if she rolls a six. She rolled a two, so she's gonna get 80,000 from Tater. Watermelon's turn, she has enough money to afford passing recess again. I know I'd mentioned that might be a concern, but she immediately won a pretty good case. So here we go, five, one, two, three, four, five, jury space, ooh. Now I don't know if she has to, I think she has to have started her turn with 300,000. I don't think she has enough tens for that right now. She's close though. Yeah, 4,000, and she's almost there. All right, let's see what her case is. Tilt. A thirsty motel guest was attacked by a soft drink machine. His change had rolled under the machine, and while trying to retrieve it, the machine toppled on him. His leg was broken by the machine. He is suing the motel for improper installation. The motel contends that the plaintiff's behavior caused the machine to tip. Hmm. Well, I think they can see the, the motel's argument, but I don't think that our jury believes it's strong enough. Um, such a machine should not be able to topple over, especially in a motel where children could be present. Um, yeah. So, I think they'll go for 200000 for watermelon, and she'll take that. That's, that's within her range. The appeal cost would be seventy-five, and it's possible the judge could find in favor, or the real-life jury could have found in favor of the motel. Eh, so hard to manipulate things. All right, so now I should check on the rule whether she needs to have started her turn there or not to go into superior court because that's gonna matter. Yeah, she can go into superior court. That means this card is no longer gonna be useful to her. She's gonna hold on to it though because if she drops below 300,000 before her next turn, which isn't likely, well, possibly, maybe the, one of these two might hit her with a settlement that could do it. Um, then she's gonna to have to stay in district court. So it's Tater's turn. We're gonna focus on her for a little bit. Four, one, two, three, four, pretty simple. But you're gonna see another one of these mighty chance cards. Disbarred, your indiscretions were so flagrant that even the Bar Association couldn't ignore them. You can keep your ill-gotten gains, but return to recess and start a new practice in another state. Okay, so that just basically moves her back to start. Not, not as bad as that assassin card would have been where you have to start, you'd lose all your money. All right, time to focus on Jules this round of turns. Good time to do so. She's at two million plus. Remember, you need to be have three million and be on one of these two spots at the start of your turn, and then you win, essentially. Um, so I guess there's nothing more to do but to roll for her. Two, one, two. And these, these Superior Court Awards can be quite big. That's how come she has so much fizzled. Taking a big slug of a soft drink can be very refreshing. For this 17-year-old plaintiff, one sip changed her life. Unbeknownst to her, inside the bottle was an inch-long needle-shaped object. It became lodged in her throat and had to be removed surgically. She has suffered headaches since the operation and will require medical and dental treatment for life. She sued the bottler and manufacturer for negligence and for violating state pure food and drug laws. Well, it seems obvious they're not gonna find for the defense, right? Now here's a case where they want to give her enough so that she doesn't try to appeal, but not so much that she goes over the top. I mean, I could see this being a million plus settlement right here. I think they're gonna go with 500,000. And that's what it is on here. She might be able, she might want to appeal that though. 
I think she's going to appeal it. She thinks this girl should get more, even though 500000 is on the range. So she's going to pay the 100000 And that's how much money she has. She can just throw around 100000 It's no big deal. This is a game where there's not really any real losers. I mean, they're all doing much better than I am in terms of funds. 350000 And they offered her 500000 So that's less. She's not going to get the extra turn. But she does get a little bit of money. A lot has changed since we've last checked in. Uh, everyone is in the Superior Court now. Uh, it's only been, I don't know, was it, maybe it was Jules last time? It's only, everyone's had one turn, but they all managed to get back, get in. And Tater, as in Todd, had a very good turn. She's actually the leader now in terms of money. Um, with 2.5 million, she's almost there. She's even closer than that. Yeah, she's very close. Um, but again, you also have to land on the spot, so you can have the right amount of money, but still not be able to get in. So it's gonna be Pinky's turn now. She gets a one. Jury. Oh no, I did it the wrong way. She's supposed to go this way. Um, chance. Long live capital punishment. Another death sentence appeals Net your firm a lucrative contract with the state. Collect 300000 from the clerk. Wow, that's really nice. Okay, great job, Pinky. Big news in Watermelon World. She's up to $2 million now. Uh, just successfully appealed a verdict. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's back at this place. If she gets um, 900000 on this next one, she's going to be in in a position to win uh, as long as she stays above three million by her next turn. So here we go. Not the right papers. Lawyers can often cause more problems than they solve. The plaintiff had hired an attorney to incorporate his business who unfortunately neglected to file the proper papers. As a result, the plaintiff became personally responsible for his company's debt, amounting to $1 million as well as losing the planned sale of his company for $1 million. The defendant disputed the actual size of the debt. He also contends that there was no proof that the sale fell through due to the company's corporate status. Hmm. All right. Well, I think our jury definitely don't. I mean, it sounds like they want a million dollars, right? Um, I haven't looked at the red number yet, but it was mentioned in the thing. If she gets a million, then she's set up. I think they don't want her to get a million. So they're going to give her 500000 That's, yeah, they're going to go outside it. I mean, they don't really care about these people's problems. Anyway, wow, they're going for two to $2,500,000. So she's going to appeal that. If she appeals that, then she wins, right? Because then she gets to go again, and she can just move right in. Whew. So I'm, I'm not going to make the change. There's... Oh, I'm, my heart's racing. Um, case number 45. 35,000. <laughs> so she doesn't get to go again. Um, she gets a little bit back from her appeal costs. Uh, and that's it for, for watermelon. She doesn't, she's so close, so close. That verdict had just been different. All right, now it's watermelon's turn. We've gone around, not a lot happened. Lots of settlements and... Um, I think a, a, a verdict for the defense having to do with the fireworks incident. Um, but now it's time to focus on Watermelon for her officially focused turn. I know the last turn or the last time I checked in with you, we were talking about her. Um, but here we go. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Pitfall, windfall. Junk food insanity plea. You freed another psychotic murderer, double your hourly rate, and collect 100000 advance on the film rights from the clerk. So free 100000 not as nice as the jury spaces. The jury spaces are really what it's all about, I think, for the most part. And we'll go right on to Tater. She's next to be focused on, and it's a new round of turns. Tater, as in touch, she gets a one. No, this way. Um, stale tail. Ooh, now, this this could be big. She's got 2,500,000. She's just a few thousand short, really. She's like 100,000 short, yeah. 
90,000 short, about no less than that, 80,000 short. Okay, stale tail, so she, if she could be in winning position here. On three separate occasions, the defendant's driver was filmed removing the plaintiff's fresh French bread and replacing it with the defendant's stale bread. <laughs> the defendant claimed no prior knowledge of his driver's action and fired him immediately. The plaintiff sued the other bakery owner for attempting to harm his business and reduce his share of the market. I have to think about this. <laughs> all right. Well, our jury is just going to find for the defendant. Um, they didn't necessarily all agree on this, but they feel like, okay, if they give her any kind of money that's going to be worth her not appealing, it's going to put her over anyway. So they're going to hope that maybe the 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 finance for the defense this is a oh i grabbed the wrong card this is this is a district court i should have grabbed the superior court okay scratch that one i'm glad i got to read it though all right cut off sorry about that the plaintiff had spent many happy hours at a restaurant before returning home at two o'clock in the morning he alleges that he was forced to swerve to avoid colliding with another car that had failed to obey a stop sign his car went off the road and uprooted two trees before it stopped head on against a third the plaintiff flat fractured both his legs and his elbow. He is suing the driver of the other vehicle, whom he claims pulled out in front of him. The defendant contends that the plaintiff was driving recklessly and that if he had not been speeding and intoxicated, he would have been able to react more appropriately. Okay, I think they're going to have to make the same play. It seems like both have a decent case. Maybe the defendant has a stronger case. Let's take a look. The amount's, he, amount's big. She's going to she's going to have to appeal even though that she maybe wouldn't in other circumstances but she's going to because the payoff is too good if if she makes this appeal she's won the game um, just be noted we'll keep playing until every till the second to last person is out oh she got it we don't even need to count her money cuz she made it to the supreme court so we'll set her in there we'll take her black pawn off and it's going to be up with people Jules' turn. Well done, Tater. It's, it's definitely like the game's been pretty neck and neck towards the end. It's got a, it's got a fast and furious end game uh, that seems largely based on luck. But um, I guess I'll do this off camera. It's Jules' turn again. And here we go. Let's take it with her, folks. Two. Getting a lot of pitfall windfalls here. Um, almost out of cards. Mass murderer's story is worth millions in book and film rights. Take his case for free to act as his agent. Collect 275000 from the clerk. Not bad. Where does that put Jules? That puts her close, but not quite close enough. I want you to experience this. Experience the flow of money. It may seem tedious, but it's worth it. Look at all those zeros. It is Pinky's turn for our attention. She's currently in last place money-wise. Uh, let's see if she can make a change, a positive change. Two. Ooh, she's on a good space to make a positive change. Let's see what her case is. Now, if she does well enough on this case, she could uh, she could win. Uh, or she could be in second place. For tax purposes, where's the beef? For tax purposes, five doctors invested over 500000 in a cattle business. The plaintiffs never saw the cattle, but relied on the defendant's reputation. Although the animals appeared valuable on paper, they were of questionable breeding. The doctors are suing to recover substantial financial losses due to misrepresentation. The defendant maintained that the plaintiffs benefited by taking large tax losses. All right. We shall deliberate. Okay, so here we have the numbers involved. The jury found uh, for the plaintiff for the sum of 200000 which happens to be the appeal cost. Uh, Pinky's probably going to appeal it. It's like, why not just appeal, appeal, appeal? One, two, three. And then we're going to look up case number 49. One million. So she gets million back as well as her court costs she gets to go again now she does if she had 
three million at this point, she would be second place, but she doesn't, so she's gonna have to roll instead. She got a four. One, two, three, four, pitfall, windfall. No honor among thieves. IRS doesn't accept your deductions. Pay 20% of all your cash assets and penalties to the clerk. All right, well, I'll do some math. Here we go. It is Jewel's turn and she uh, took the settlement, well, not the settlement, the jury award, which is less than what was asked for on this full of bull story, which has to do with a plaintiff that blamed her pneumonia on getting hit by a bull. Um, so, Pinky is gonna play this negligence card since she took it. We check the verdict book and if it's less than that, Jules has to pay her three times the difference between whatever this book says and the actual um, verdict, or in uh, 200,000. So we'll go to page 96 here. It's 800,000, so she has to pay her 600,000 times three. That's 1,800,000. That's a big move for Pinky there. It's gonna help things out, help her out anyway. And with that, Pinky's back on top. She has the three million needed to, to get into the Supreme Court if she lands in the right space and completes a turn on that space, essentially. Uh, but it's time to focus on Watermelon. Watermelon rolls a six. Oh, I'll put that in the wrong spot, sorry. And one, two, three, four, five, six, jury. Watermelon needs to close this out soon. Volume controls. Both sides agree that a neighbor called the police to complain of loud noise. The police ordered the plaintiffs to turn down the music. The two male plaintiffs testified that they obeyed, but that were then attacked with nightsticks and taken into custody. Huh. Since witnessing the assault on her loved ones, the third plaintiff has been unable to leave her home. They are suing the police department for assault. The police officers testified that the plaintiffs did turn down the volume, but as soon as they left the apartment, it was back up again. The defendants claim that the plaintiffs yelled obscenities at them. They were arrested and charged with criminal assault, but these charges were later dropped. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think the police have a very good case there. Um, I think even P Pinky, I, I, I haven't been talking about who's actually been making the choices here. Pinky's the one who usually finds in favor of the defendant in a lot of the kind of like negligence cases or cases where someone like breaks a glass and then sues the glass manufacturer, that kind of thing. She usually finds for the defendant. Here, I don't think she can really do that. Um, let's see, what, was the, what were the damages? Well, there's a psychological damage and then they were attacked by nightsticks, but I don't know what damage that did. Okay, we'll say an even million. Well, but they don't want to give her a million because she's at two million already. 750,000, I think is what they'll go with. Okay, let's take a look. That's the upper level of what they were asking for. So I think Watermelon's gonna just accept that. And she's very close to being over the top. She might even be there. Um, no one, no one read me wants to spend their time counting up the money in this game. So I did have to do that for Pinky. All right, let's move on to Jules' turn, and we'll just go ahead and keep going. Jules, she has a four, one, two, three, four. All right, another jury case. This one's called Tin Ear. I have Tin Ear, by the way. Stop, look, and listen. That's the railroad company's safety theme. Approaching an intersection, the plaintiff hops off the train to operate a switch. The engineer, seeing a motorist approaching very quickly, sounds the horn. The accident with the car was avoided, but the plaintiff was so close to the horn that he suffered loss of hearing, ringing in the ears in a damaged equilibrium. He has not been able to return to work and is doubtful that he ever will. His expert witness testified that the sound was comparable to a fully revved jet engine. The defense stated that before the incident, the plaintiff had a tin ear, a congenital defect. Hmm. 
never knew that about tinnitus, that it was a congenital defect. Okay, so he has tinnitus as a result. Tinnitus is annoying. It definitely impacts your life, I can say. It's really hard to hear what people say a lot, especially as it advances. Um, but it mainly just makes for social awkwardness, which kind of happens anyway. So, but do they know that, do they? Well, Pinky is on the jury. I think she's probably going to say, fine for the defendant, like, quit your bitching and just deal with it. So we'll go with that. That would trump whatever Watermelon had to say. Um... One million, three hundred thousand is the appeal cost. I think you may as well do it. It's worth your while to appeal in this game, at least when you're playing solitaire. I, I think you lose a lot of the game by playing it solitaire, because most of it is the arguments and the kind of depth of personality that I don't necessarily get at in my play, especially since I try to go quicker than I would if I were actually playing with humans, because I don't know, it's different. Uh, you don't linger on these moments as much. 148. 1,500,000. Wow. So that's going to put her over. I'm pretty sure. That's three purple bills. Nope, doesn't put her over. But she gets to go again. So we'll do that. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, big time. She's on the space. You see that arrow there? That means she's on the special... Supreme Court space. She has an opportunity. If she can prove herself in this case, she will be able to argue before the Supreme Court. Which, there we go. Pillow talk. A 25-year-old parole violator sued the Department of Corrections because while in jail, his pre-existing neck injury worsened. He claimed the pillow and mattress he had in his cell caused the problem. Although he repeatedly requests different bedding, none was issued. Hmm. Yeah, I think Pinky's going to find for the defendant again. 10000 is the appeal cost. This is Superior Court. Had to double check because that was a low amount. Um, why not, right? Wouldn't you appeal if it was just 10000 and you were a millionaire? Sure you would. All right, we're at number 68. 750,000, and that is going to put her over the top. And up with people, Jules is our second place winner. Bloop. And that leaves us down to just Pinky and the watermelon. All righty, we're going to focus on Pinky again. Both individuals have enough money to enter the Supreme Court. They just have to land on the space and start their turn on that space. Or land on that space and get a good appeal. All right, so Pinky goes six, and that's going to put her right here. Pitfall, windfall, not what she would want. She would want a five in that situation. Bankruptcy, the defendant in any case of your choice is declared bankrupt, has declared bankruptcy to avoid paying judgment. Huh? Oh, I see. So it just makes it so that the person doesn't get any money. That's not going to probably matter right now. Watermelon's got quite a lot of money, but could. Time to think about Watermelon. She's one in a five again. She got a four. It's going to put her at Pitfall, Windfall. Is this the last one? No, there's two more. And savings and loan, insolvent. The depositors take it on the chin, but the lawyers get their fees, sorting it all out after deducting 10% of their hourly rate as a public service gesture. What a public servant. You get 150000 That's seems fairly irrelevant when you have this much money. And we'll go right on to Pinky, I suppose. Oh, well maybe I'll stop. There's some screaming. Oh, it's a settle. That's quick. Okay. She's going to do it against Watermelon. Six. Watermelon has to pay her 60000 Again, not too relevant if you have this much money. We'll do Watermelon's next turn off camera. Pinky's turn for focus. She's looking at a two. She got a two. Ooh, this is big. All right. Um, nurse, help. An 80-year-old man finally consented to have live-in help. An employment agency was contra contacted and a male nurse was hired. 
After three nights, the patient armed himself with a gun and locked himself in his bathroom. Failing to break down the door, the nurse stole the plaintiff's valuables, including his car. The plaintiff is suing the agency for its employees' unprofessional conduct. Okay, so it's really... I mean, she's going to... Well... So here's a case where Watermelon wants to give enough money so that even if Pinky appeals, it's not going to be more than the amount that Watermelon gives her. <laughs> so she's going to want to give Pinky as much money as possible, right? Uh, which kind of gives water, which kind of puts watermelon in a corner. Uh, so I'm going to take a moment so that watermelon can count up Pinky's funds and come up with the right amount for this. This is delicate. Watermelon, not knowing the worth of the valuables, is just going with one million, thinking that that's high enough that Pinky would maybe be dissuaded to appeal. Uh, the reason she doesn't want her to appeal is that. If she does so, she gets another turn. So let's take a look here. 150,000 to appeal. I think Pinky, that would put her right at, yeah, that's the sweet spot right there. So Pinky is going to appeal, hoping she gets another turn by going over a million, although they weren't asking for near that amount. 150 right there, and we're looking at case number 95. So if the actual ruling in real life is bigger than a million, then Pinky is going to be our third place. 305,000. Nope. A million would have been much better. Since we're down to two, we're going to break our pattern and just go right on into Watermelon's turn, which follows the turn you previously saw on the video. Three, settle, she's going to pick Pinky. Pinky defends, Pinky's turn. And Pinky has enough now. That settle was important. Pinky has enough now to make it into third place anyway. And that's going to do it. So our placement here for the lawyer, lawyer track, I guess, of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament is Tater is in top. And up with people, Jules, Pinky, and Watermelon.